Hello, welcome to AJ Storytime channel for kids. If you are new to my channel, welcome and please subscribe before you leave. And don't forget to hit the little bell so you receive the notification of when I'm reading live or I downloaded a new book. The story time theme for today is called Art. The first book we are reading is called Mouse Paint by Ellen Stallwash. Once there were three little white mice on a white piece of paper. The cat couldn't find them. One day, while the cat was asleep, the nice mice saw three jars of paint. One red, one yellow, and one blue. They thought it was mouse paint. They climbed right in. Then one was red. One was yellow and one was blue. They drew puddles of paint onto the paper. The puddles looked like fun. The red mouse stepped into a yellow puddle and did a little dance. His red feet stirred the yellow puddle until... Look, he cried. Red feet in a yellow puddle make orange. The yellow mouse hopped into a blue puddle. His feet mix and stir and stir and mix until... Look down, said the red mouse and the blue mouse. Yellow feet in the blue puddle makes green. Then the blue mouse jumped into a red puddle. He splash and mix and dance until... Purple, they all shot it. Blue feet in a red puddle makes purple. But the paint on their fur got sticky and stiff. So they washed themselves down to a nice soft white. And painted the paper instead. They painted one part red one part yellow and one part blue. They mix red and yellow to paint an orange part. Yellow and blue to paint a green part and blue and red to paint a purple part. But they left some white because of the cat. The end. Such a nice story about the mice painting, right? And the different type of colors. I have one more book for you. This one is called The Art Lesson by Tommy De Paola. Tommy knew he wanted to be an artist when he grew up. He drew pictures everywhere he went. It was his favorite things to do. His friends have favorite things to do too. Jack collected all kinds of turtles, Herbie made huge cities in his sandbox, and Jeannie, Tommy's best friend, could do cartwheels and stand on her head. But Tommy drew and drew and drew. His twin cousins, who were already grown up, were in art school learning to be real artists. They told him not to copy and to practice, 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 so he did. Tommy put his pictures up on the wall of his half of the bedroom. His mom put them all around the house. His dad took them to the barber shop where he worked. Tom and Nana, Tommy's Irish grandfather and grandmother, had his picture in their grocery store. Nana Fall River, his Italian grandmother, put one in a special frame on the table next to the photograph of Aunt Claude in her wedding dress. Once Tommy took a flashlight and a pencil under the covers and drew a picture on his sheets. 
But when his mom changed the sheets on Monday and found them, she said, No more drawing on the sheets, Tommy. His mom and dad were having a new house built, so Tommy drew pictures of what it would look like when it was finished. When the walls were up, one of the carpenters gave Tommy a piece of bright blue chalk. Tommy took the chalk and drew beautiful pictures all over the unfinished walls. But when the painters came, his dad said, Dad said, Tommy, no more drawing on the walls. Tommy couldn't wait to go to kindergarten. His brother Joe told him there was a real art teacher who came to the school to give art lessons. When do we have our art lessons? Tommy asked the kindergarten teacher. Oh, you won't have your art lessons until next year, say Miss Bird. But we are going to paint pictures tomorrow. It wasn't much fun. The paint was awful and the paper got all wrinkly. Miss Bird made the paint by pouring different colors powders into different jars and mixing them with water. The paint didn't stick to the paper very well and it cracked. If it was windy when Tommy carried his picture home, the paint blew right off the paper. At least, you get more than one piece of paper in kindergarten, his brother Joe say. When the art teacher comes, you only get one piece. Tommy knew that the art teacher came to the school every other Wednesday. He could tell she was an artist because she wore a blue smock over her dress and she always carried a big box of thick colored chalks. Once Tommy and Jeannie looked at the drawings that were hung in the hallway, they were done by the first graders. Your pictures are much better, Jeannie and Tommy. Next year, when we have real art lessons, you be the best one. Tommy could hardly wait. He practiced all summer. Then, on his birthday, which was right after school began, his mom and dad gave him a box of 64 Crayola crayons. Regular boxes of crayons have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. This box has so many other colors. Blue, violet, turquoise, red, orange, pink, and even gold, silver, and copper. Class, say Miss Landers, the first grade teacher. Next month, the art teacher will come to our room. So on Monday, instead of singing, we will practice using our crayons. On Monday, Tommy brought his 64 crayon to school. Miss Lander was not pleased. Everyone must use the same crayons, she said, school crayons. School crayons are only the same old eight colors. As Miss Lander passed them out to the class, she said, These crayons are school property. Do not break them, peel off the paper, or wear down the points. How am I supposed to practice being an artist with school crayons? Tommy asked Jack and Herbie. That's enough, Tommy, Miss Lander say, and I want you to take those birthday crayons home with you and leave them there. And Joe was right. They only got one piece of paper. Finally, the day of our lesson came. Tommy could hardly sleep that night. The next morning, he hid the box of 64 crayons under his sweater and went off to school. He was ready. The classroom door opened and he woke the teacher. Miss Lander said, Class, this is Mrs. Bowers, the art teacher, Patty, who is our paper monitor this week. We will give you out one piece of paper to each of you. And remember, don't ruin it because it is the only one piece you get. Now, pay attention to Miss Bowers. Class, Mrs. Bowers began. Because Thanksgiving is not too far away, we will learn to draw a pilgrim man. A pilgrim woman and a turkey. Watch carefully and copy me. Copy? Copy? Tommy knew that real artists didn't copy. This was terrible. This was supposed to be real art lesson. He folded his arm and just sat there. Now, what's the matter? Miss Lander asked. Tommy looked past her and spoke right to Mrs. Bauer. I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, and my cousin told me that real artists don't copy. And besides, Miss Landers won't let me use my own 64 Crayola crayons. Well, well, Mrs. Bauer say, what are we going to do? She turned to Miss Landers, and they whispered together. Miss Landers nodded. Now, Tommy, Mrs. Bauer say, it wouldn't be fair to let you do something different from the rest of the class. 
But I have an idea. If you draw the pilgrim man and the woman and the turkey, if there is any time left, I'll give you another piece of paper and you can do your own picture with your own crayons. Can you do that? I tried, Tommy said with a big smile. And he did. And he did. And he still does. <laughs> the end. I have one last book for you. Remember that today, a story time thing is about art. The next book is called Noisy Pain Box. This is by Bar Rosenstock. Basha Kantishki spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. His story book falls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scale to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talk and talk and talk. Basia's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said auntie. She showed Basia the correct way to mix color on the paint box palette. Basia mixed red with yellow, then mixed red with blue. As the color changed, Basia heard a whisper. Hiss, she's louder hiss, the loudest still hiss. What's that sound? asked Basha. I don't hear anything, say auntie. Basha listened at his brush, stir and swish. The swissening colors trill like an orchestra turning off for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Basha, what a noisy paint box. Silly but silly, say Papa. Stop being foolish, say Mama. Basha painted the sound of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It climbed like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest shallow strings. He tossed up jack swash of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of bourbon gleam. Clenching orange and tinkling violet, Basha painted and painted until the color went quiet. Look what I made, shall Basha. It's a house, asked Auntie. It's a flower, asked Mama. What is it supposed to be, asked Papa. It's music, said Basha, waltzing his painting around the house. Come down, say Mama. Do some math, say Papa. Heaven, say Auntie, this boy needs a proper art class. So Basha went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers just like everyone else. As the year passed, Basha finished school and started to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Basha couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary color male bass whistling as he rode to work, and the scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the stag color of his overcoat. One evening, Sur Table Steam and Starch Basha attended the opera. As the orchestra music crashed around him, the color of the noise paint box twirled wildly in his mind, stopping lines of vermilion and coral, caroline triangles in pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and chaffer. Basha heard the coloring singing, Basha saw the music dancing. And Basha was never quiet as proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with his famous teacher. Then, that one, if, is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? His teacher asked. Basha wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. 
Once again, Basha put houses and flowers, animals and people into his painting. Just like everyone expected, the teachers were very happy. Basha was not. His artist friend understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscape and pretty ladies. They told art needed to change. Art should make you feel. Basha told him like music. Exactly, said his friend. But none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day Basha grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings rotting from his noisy paint box. Wow. Snapping settling points, crushing Crimson Square, whispering charcoal lines, Basha named these paintings after the music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accomplishment, feel, movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Basha kindly created something entirely new. Astro Art. The end. All right, that was a really nice book, a really nice story about Basha, right? Just be who you want to be, all right? Draw what you want to draw. Everything that you will do will be special in your life because you did it. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. Have a good day.